lately, I'm ignoring that because the belief from Allah is that we, is that this is the way a Muslim should be. Or what? do we sometimes get stressed? Like, how do you deal with this situation? There's more than one way of dealing with this. For it could be anything about it. Marriage, parents. <laughs> well, that's every I'm every. Going yeah. A lot of things that yeah, life. yeah. I'm trying to find a balance. But my family are getting stressed. But I'm trying to. Like, I don't want to get stressed because it gets me stressed. So I, I, I try to tell them it's going to be okay. Allah has a plan. But my mom said you can't always have that. Because mom's practicing. So I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to find it hard to balance me. And I'm having full trust in Allah that's going to fulfill everything. I'm trying to have the foundation. You understand? Well, this is what we have to have. And there's definitely no harm in having it from a psychological perspective. The more trust you have in Allah, the more optimism you will have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is something in, the, in Islam is called fa'l. Yeah. Fa'l is optimism. And this is something the Muslims believe. And this is a good trait to carry on everything. For example, yes. For, yes, it is. For example, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallam was escaping from Mecca to Medina, and he went into the Ghar Hira with uh, uh, Ghar Thor, sorry. The, the, the cave with Abu Bakr Siddiq and the ayat came down you know that he said to his friend so Muhammad وسلم, he said to Abu Bakr Siddiq don't be fearful Allah is with us same thing exactly what you said to your family if you think about it and bear in mind he said he didn't say uh, لا تخف. He didn't say don't be scared. لا تحزن. Because he was, the, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq was upset about the situation. He wasn't scared about anything. He was upset that the Prophet will be go through all these problems. So, Allah Himself He gives us this advice. The Prophet He gives His friends that advice. You know, the Prophets when they went to their people, that was one of the first things they always told the people. Musa when he told his people, he said. Uh, uh, you know, he said, I'm just trying to remember the ayah, but it's basically said to the, his people, you know, have tawakkul on Allah. But does that mean fully? Like, fully, fully. My belief, I'm talking about in general things like, you know, life problems and issues. It doesn't, it doesn't mean... I don't understand. So what Ibn al-Qayyim, one of the scholars, he mentioned this situation. Mm. He says, it doesn't mean that now you say, I have all full faith in Allah and full reliance on him, that means I'm going to do nothing and sit down. And no, 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 I'm not, no, no, of course you do the job. Yes, I, there's a hadith yeah, yeah. of the Prophet, he said, Aqilha wa tawakkal. Basically, some guy, Sahabi, wanted to just leave his camel like that. He said, no, actually tie it up and then have reliance on God. So you do everything you need to do, just like in that hadith, you tie it and then you have tawakkul of Allah. But you have full tawakkul. Yes. Okay. But what? But that's okay. I understand. But it can be challenging. But that's like Allah's love, right? Allah's testing you. He's gonna, if you have an easy life, that means Allah's not challenging. Like Allah's not loving you as much, right? There is something to that effect, bro. Like, men ashad dubala and bad al anbiya. Hadith says that who are those who are tested after the anbiya? And I'm paraphrasing by amthal or those who are most like them, and then those who are most like them. So it's a, a situation of reality. Even you will be tested. Some say, well, does that mean, because this puts a lot of people off. They say, I'd rather not, I'd rather not be a strong believer so I don't get tested then. But actually, it's only a test when you are a believer. Otherwise, it will be a punishment if you are a disbeliever. If you are a disbeliever, it will be a punishment. If you have rejected Islam, then it's not a test, but it's a punishment. You still feel the pain. And what's the evidence of that? The evidence of that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, uh, in Surah Al-Balad, uh, And we have, we have guided them to the two uphill path. Both of the, why is it two uphill path? The kuffar will take the uphill path to hell, the ones who reject Islam and so on, and the Muslims, the true believer, will take the uphill path to heaven. It's hard work on both sides. You will, you will face adversity either way. We have created the human being in a state of toil, which means hardship. Hardship is inescapable in the human condition. You will always find hardship. 
But when you are a Muslim and believer, it will be something which is intrinsic, fruitful, and it will be a test. It will mean something to you. Whereas your disbeliever is Haba and Mansura. Nothing. You find it hard to can it, grasp can, it. Sorry, just add, can you not? That's not Allah saying in the Quran that Allah sends a small calamity to divert a bigger calamity. So as a disbeliever, can that calamity, is going to lead him to Islam? Is that a curse? Is that a test? Or is that a... Yeah, that's, that wouldn't be a test. So in this case, where the ayah, I think I mentioned it a few times today. That we have tested you with hasanat, good things and bad things, so you can come back. So yes, it's, it will be. It could be a punishment. It could also be a test to bring them back yeah. on the path. That's what I'm saying. Like same thing yeah. with like the the calm and stuff. Allah wants the best for all of us. Allah is just. Allah is loving. Allah yes. Is he wants the best for all so of us. If someone's negative, can I say don't be not negative, brother? Look at the best thing. Like that's eyes. exactly what you should be like, doing as a Muslim. But I feel like people. Are because my uncle is always half and puffing anxiety and this reminds me of the, my, my past. I used to be like sad. Yeah, and that can I, never, and I, that will not, that, that's, you, look, negativity begets negativity. That is a, that is a, that is a, positive, you know this, this discussion of positive energy? It's true, bro. If you're around, that's a thing, brother, because if you're around people that are negative, you're going to be negative as well. It's a tafa'ul and tasha'um in the Arabic language. Tafa'ul is when you're positive and optimistic and that's part of the religion I'm telling you the Prophet himself in a hadith he says al-fa'l which means optimism that's how you translate it so for example I'll give you an example yeah say you're making dua you're making dua to oh Allah give me this give me that give me that and it starts raining is what, what, what is the how should we perceive that rain according to this hadith we should perceive it as a good sign be optimistic Allah is maybe answering my dua right now do you get me? Yeah, Being up. Uh, no, no, not when it's raining. I'm just uh, giving an example. But a anything that happens, you gotta be. You gotta look at the world half full. If you look at the world half empty, if you look at the glass half empty in the world, then you are going to. It's, it's going to miss out. Look, there's there are studies on this. Okay. On the extreme end, there's something called nihilism, which means someone that is completely purposeless, hasn't got a direction, hasn't got nothing, doesn't think that there's worth his life living. Those people are most predisposed to severe and acute anxiety disorder and depression. Why would you want to input, put something into your psyche that will make, your, that will make you, as a person, pre, more predisposed to psychological illnesses like this? Optimism, and there is, there is over-optimism, which is called delusions of grandeur, where you think everything's going to be fine, and, which uh, bipolar people have this. It's just like a maniac. A, a mania well you, you know that's not what we want we're not talking about someone who's being unrealistic it's got to be grounded in some level of yeah but we're not pessimists realism if you want to put it that way and optimism are fine but pessimism is haram it's te pessimism let me tell you why the prophet, the prophet Muhammad sallam, he said and I am the I am as my slave makes of me so in other words, if you assume that Allah is going to do bad things to you, you're going to get what you assume. If you assume Allah is going to do good, then you're going to get what you assume. That's why Ibn Qayyim in his book, Hadda'u al-Dawa, The Medicine and the Cure, he mentions in his, the first chapters the, the power of dua and the importance of dua. And he says that if you make dua to Allah and you're not, you don't believe that it's going to be answered, it won't be answered. One of the conditions of dua is that you have to have an ilhah of dua which is basically persistence and du'a. Confidence. Uh, yeah, confidence and persistence, Allah is going to do it. Yeah. Believe you me, if you have weakness and du'a, you're not going to get anything done. Do you get me? So you have to, the six, he mentioned six conditions, actually. It's got to be in the right time, it should be qibla, you have to have adab, you have to have etiquettes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, 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 the right times are like the, between the adhan and the thing, and the, uh, the, the iqama and the, the adhan and the iqama, the, the last two thirds of the night, in sujood, the sa'at al-istijabah and sujood al-jumu'ah, and these things. Yeah. Do, if you want to do du'a, do it properly. How you do du'a? You make hamd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, salat on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, face the qibla, on tahara, proper making du'a. And he mentioned something so powerful. He said du'a is min aqwal asbab. It's one of the most powerful causes. Allah, he put causes in the dunya and he made du'a the most powerful one. It's the silah of the mu'min, he mentions. It's, it's the ammunition of the believer. And you know, he says something interesting, Ibn Qayyim. He said it's the ammunition of the believer, but because it's ammunition, it's like a sword. If the person who's wielding it, or is uh, the yielding the sword is weak, 
then the shot, will, the, 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 the hit will be weak. So you have to be strong when you're making the du'a. Du'a is an extremely important thing and you cannot be pessimistic when you're making du'a. Likewise, you shouldn't be pessimistic at all. Is that, could be that reason why Allah doesn't answer your du'a? Because you're not. Yes. These are reasons why Allah does not answer du'a. These are called mawana'a, al-istijaba. These are the reasons that the, the preventers. Same with prayer as well. Like, yeah, when no. You told you to pray, you just pray. Like, no, well, well, no pr meaning for it. If you have to have khushu'a in the prayer. But what I'm saying is that your du'a will not be answered if you don't believe it will be answered. Yeah, and what about, okay. the, man, what about the man who said, the Prophet said, the man who he's, his clothing is haram? Wait. Yes. Yeah, فَأَنَّ يُسْتَجَابَ لَهُ The hadith says. How is it that his du'a will be answered? وَأُمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامٌ وَمَأْكَلُهُ حَرَامٌ Everything is haram. فَأَنَّ يُسْتَجَابَ لَهُ How is it going to be answered? So this, that's another category of preventers. But what we're saying is that some people say, Oh, Allah doesn't answer my du'a. I can tell you something. Allah has answered all my du'a my whole life. There's never been one du'a Allah has not answered. I'm not saying that to show off. Wallahi, Uqsub, I've never, I've never thought of one du'a except for, except for some people that I've made du'a for that haven't died yet. But that's in Allah's hands when they, when they finish them, kill them. The, the, you know, Bashar al-Assad and so on, these kinds of uh, individuals. But Allah, that, that's something up to Allah. But apart from that, all my du'a's are, why? Because I know that you have to, you have to be, and when you make a du'a, you can't say, oh, Allah is going to do it or not. I, I don't believe, are you, are you there? The worst kind of du'a, if you're there, please. Can you imagine? If you're there, answer me. Astaghfirullah, what do you mean if you're there? You're not, that's not, you're not going to be guided. If you're there, please help me. What do you mean if you're there? What do you mean if you're there? Class, it's like a, it's like going to it's like going to like what do you call it the doctor. If you're there, please give me a prescription. Do you mean pill if you're there? You're conditioning it with his existence. That's not du'a that's bound to be answered. You have yaqeen and du'a, it's istiqan. You have uh, strength and you have uh, ilhah and persistence and so on. No, no, no. This is so important. The religion of Islam is optimistic. Like I said, the Prophet he used the word optimism. The word optimism fa'l. Yeah, the fa and the, uh, the hamza and the lam. He used those words himself. He says al fa'l. Yeah, this in the religion. It's some very important. Optimism is uh, optimism is wajib, and pessimism is haram. So that, that is hand in hand with the belief in Allah. With your optimism good and your belief, you are hand in hand with Allah. Because I know Allah was the best, and you try also at the foundation level. Don't go to extreme. Think too ahead. But what you're saying is keep it grounded. You have to be sh sure. Always be sure. Allah is ala kulli shayin qadir. He can do everything. Uqsum yeah. can do everything. You can, you'll be so surprised what he can do. You'll be so shocked. But sometimes I get in my family, people telling me, no, don't, you're, you're going too far. My mom and my neighbors, you've got there's too much Islam. Too much Islam. I, I, it's not, because yeah. you know the perfect time, how do you know that's the right Islam? But when you do too much Islam, things are too extreme. But that time was the perfect time too extreme. How do you understand? I understand, but this, look, who is on the haq? you on the haq, they're on the bottom. You're on the truth, they're on falsehood. Don't let the people of, I'm not going to say the people of falsehood, but yeah. people who are espousing falsehood deter you or perturb you from the haq and the truth. There's no upper limit to how much you can make du'a. It's very important. There is no upper limit to, when, uh, to how much you can make du'a. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If my slave asks me about me, then I am near. Do you know this is a very interesting verse? You know why? Usually when, when Tasa'ul comes in Quran, when they ask about this person asks this and that, yes, Aluna Ka'an al Khamru al Maysir, Qul. There's always that word Qul there. Qul fihima ismu kabiru manaf al nas. This Aluna Ka'an dil Qan name. Qul. Sa'atul alik. Uh, this A I does not have Qul in it. If, because why? Because Allah says, if my slave asks you about me, then I am near. Qul has been omitted. Why? Just to bring that closer to you as well. To bring that closer to you as well. To Lexically, the words are coming together. Just like Allah wants you to come together with Him. This is the delicacy and the precision and the sophistication and the meticulousness of the lexical items in Islam. So would you say, Maybe small matter, big matter. Like if we, if we have an argument, shut it down and run to Allah. Every little thing. Is that what you're trying to say? Every little thing. Every uh, every kabira and sahira. Every small and big thing. Uh, Allah is never is is never like time is closed. His office is closed. Every time Allah hears, here's what you have to say. At any time you want to speak to Allah, you speak to him. It's called Munajah. You want to make du'a to him, you make du'a to him. If you want to beg him, you beg him. We are his slaves at the end of the day. And there are so many hadith on the du'a. Du so many du'a. A du'a huwa al-ibadah. A du'a is ibadah. It is worship itself. 
You ask Allah whenever. You have istiqan, you have belief, you have optimism. Op like I said, optimism is wajib on the Muslim. Al Fa'l, the Prophet himself, he said the word optimism. He used the word optimism. Al Tasha'um is haram. Pessimism is haram. And, and by ijma' it's haram. Because it goes against Husn al of Allah. We always have to think good things are going to happen. And by the way, you were talking, and another thing, you make the specific dua for hem and hazan. For example, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al hemmi wal hazan wal ajazi wal kasal wal jubani wal bukh. Wa a'udhu bika min ghalibat al dayni wa qahr al rijal. What's his preference to you? This is a hadith about uh, dua about anxiety and depression yeah. and all that. Yeah, I heard of this one. Yeah. Uh, Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahla wa anta ta'ja'al hazna idha, uh, idha shi'ta sahla. Hadith like this, very important. That uh, yeah. uh, you make yeah. things easy and blah blah. This is very important. Yeah, but Alhamdulillah, I, I, I battled that side. Yes. But now, it's a matter of composing and balancing my life now. But now I'm getting tests, more tests. And because I'm the only child and I don't talk to anyone much, I think it's Shaitan trying to mess me up with my mom. Listen, my mom brother, you have a strong relationship. Don't change that. Don't ever change that. Because if you change that, you'll be doing bad things. No, but, but it doesn't mean that everything she says is right. Okay? The, the deen is important that you keep it pristine. There's no obedience to the creator, creation in the disobedience of the creator. All, all I'm saying to you right now is, your mum is the most important woman in your life right now. Okay? Huh? Don't worry about that. Fine, keep pushing. Bismillah, you know, it's fine. No, just no, no. All, 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 all I'm saying is, you need to keep the optimism, keep the du'a, keep the prayers, keep the khushu'a and have a good structure in your life, you'll be alright. Alhamdulillah, if that's what's going, going, going. Yes. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.